Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, it's a new year, and this is our first batch of videos getting back into the new year. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas and had a wonderful new year. And over deer camp, uh, over this last deer hunting season, we came to a pretty important realization uh, that I want to sort of share with some of you guys. And we're just kind of kind of pose the question or, or whatever, you know, why should everybody have a 308 caliber hunting rifle of some sort? Utility rifle, we could say a semi-auto uh, uh, of sorts if you wanted to. Just basically, why do you really want to make sure you have a 308 rifle laying around? I mean, that's an important question to pose. And uh, I think, you know, the answer is pretty straight to the point, but we are going to break a few things down and have some fun with this one for sure. Before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Sonoran Desert Institute for supporting our videos. If you're looking for a career in gunsmithing technology, they are definitely your go-to people. They have some wonderful curriculum, awesome instructors. They even have drone programs. How cool is that? So if you want to learn how to operate drones, you want to learn about reloading, gunsmithing, more on the business side in the gun world, they are your go-to people. They will totally hook you up. Uh, some of their financial incentives are very attractive. Check them out. Tell them we sent you. And a big thanks to them for supporting our efforts. So in a nutshell, how would we answer that question? I think the, the big thing with 308 is that it's just such a hard-hitting cartridge, and it's been around for quite a while, right? And it's got a proven mm -hmm. track record of, you know, commercial and like military use right so we know that it'll stop deer it'll stop threats and it's quite plentiful like in ammunition supply mm -hmm. and rifles that are chambered in that particular cartridge are very plentiful so i don't think it's going away anytime soon and remember the video we did about 308 being dead you know just kind of posing that that question in a gun gripe this, this is, is kinda, the antithesis this is the anti an antithesis yes, yes. so Th but, it totally is. Um, but it's just, it's kind of common knowledge that a 308 is not going anywhere yeah. and that you do need one just because. I mean, that's a good enough reason. So right we, there. we are, we are backpedaling on that video <laughs> just a little bit. 308 isn't dead. You should totally have a 308. One reason, as we discussed, certainly is, uh, you know, the amount of com commonality of ammo out there, especially in rural locations. Okay, say you're going to your favorite deer hunting area and it's in the middle of nowhere and you might have Bob's Pond or Bob's Hardware Store or something in the middle of nowhere that stocks like 10 boxes of ammo on the shelf. So what are you going to find on the shelf? Are you going to find 6.5 by 55 Swedish or are you going to find 308? You're probably going to find 308. You're going to find 30, 30 6 right? You're going to find the usual suspects. You're going to find 30, 30. So one could argue 30, 30, 30, 6 might be better choices for deer hunting uh, than 308. But I think 308 is a good contender because also it's a NATO cartridge, right? So, you know, in some terrible crap hits the fan situation, you're always going to be able to find M80 ball. Always, right? You know, uh, NATO doesn't use 30 out 6. Well, I should backtrack and say that it's still probably in use in, in some sniping circles in NATO countries. So that's an outlier. But 30 30 Winchester, no, definitely not. So I would say. For the standpoint of being a NATO cartridge, it's important to have a bolt gun. Um, now, the rifle that I have right here is, we're going to do a full video on this particular rifle, but this is a Remington Mohawk Model 600. Uh, this particular rifle was made probably around the mid-60s, all right, mid to late 60s, which is really cool. You know, it's a nice vintage hunting rifle that I found uh, up at Adventure Outdoors. A big shout out to Counter 2. All right, that they they deal on the bolt guns and stuff over there and all the the hunting rifles. So counter two, represent counter two. All right. Anyway, but uh, went in there and ended up leaving with this bolt gun. But it is a 308, and we've just got a little pole one and a half to four uh, VX Freedom. You know, basic optic. This one does have the Pigplex reticle, which is really cool. And you notice the the bolt handle on this thing. It kind of reminds you of like a miniature P17, which is kind of cool. But it's light and handy right? It's got a great trigger. It's accurate. You know, it's got a lot of things going for it. So see, that's what I'm talking about. When you want to scratch that itch of having a good 308 bolt gun, I bought this gun as a backup to Brandy's uh, Kimber Model 84M. But then it sort of drove that, that the talking point, Chad, of, you know, everybody, if you're going to show up 
to deer camp or something with your favorite oddball hunting rifle. You've got a 25 alt six or some seven millimeter waters or whatever the crap weird FUD caliber that you run or whatever. Okay. That's all good and fine. But what if you got to deer camp and forgot your ammo, right? If you always pack your 308 with your hunting rifles, you should always bring a backup hunting rifle when you go hunting, period, all the time. Why not make that backup a good, solid, easy to get caliber just in case? You never know. We, we, we are humans. We forget. You might leave that, leave the house and forget your ammo. Now you can go to the local hardware store and probably find some 308 to get you by. Now look, man, you can probably find your 7mm Aud 8. It, they might have to bring it out of like the, the bottom depths of the bottom shelf in the back corner and blow the dust off of it. But, you know, if you fell out of the tree stand and it broke your fall, you could just get your backup gun, right? That's right. Is that the idea? I, I mean, mean, it's important to have a backup gun. You just never know if something's gonna, you're going to have an issue. And I can't tell you how many times I've showed up to deer camp and you, you've invited somebody out to deer camp, and you're thinking, okay, well, surely you invite someone to go deer hunting, they own a rifle. Nope. And it's like, you don't own a <laughs> rifle? All like, right, man. You don't own a deer hunting rifle? <laughs> hey, I'm here to hunt deer. Yeah. What are you going to hunt with? Uh, uh, yeah, so I've just, from my experiences over time, just hunting with, within enough hunting situations and having the long guns out enough, I just always bring a backup gun. Yeah. And in fact... More than one. You know, usually yeah. we'll bring two or three guns. Yeah, Eric brings backups for his backups for his backups. Because if it can go wrong, it will. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about 308's performance. You know, 308's actually a, a very good hunting cartridge. Uh, you know, Brandy's gotten a lot of kill data with the uh, Hornady 150 grain Superformance. Uh, that's loaded with the SST bullet. And it smokes them dead as a doornail. I mean, she hasn't, she's shot four bucks in the last couple of years with that Kimber over there. And nothing walks away from it. It's a very, very, very effective bullet. I will say that that particular load is a little bit of an outlier for normal 308 because, like, M80 ball is usually touted about 2,800 feet per second or so. But we chronographed that suit performance, and it was like almost 3,000 feet per second for that 150 grain pill. Well, that's so, that suit performance powder yeah. that they use. So it's just more efficient powder, and you get like, you don't get uh, any increase in pressures, but you get a, a marketed increase in speed, which is the entire like reasoning behind the Superformance line. I mean, the box has like an, an engine on it, you know, with like huge headers and stuff. Yeah. Like a I mean, that rod. is the name of the game, right? Yeah. If you can increase velocity without increasing chamber pressure, that's that's something we all want when mm -hmm. it comes to a load in our hunting rifle, especially when you're trying to chase, you know, those higher velocities. You're trying to shoot a little flatter. You're trying to get a little more distance where you can still have some some decent power out of the gun. So that super performance load is 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 a nice outlier. Um, uh, they do it in a couple of different bullet weights, but the 150s are the only ones I have experience with, mainly just uh, due to availability. Mm -hmm. Uh, at local shop, you know, again, uh, when I picked up this particular rifle, I just happened to look over on the shelf. Sure enough, there was some Hornady Superformance on the shelf, and they had a few boxes, and I was like, all right, well, there we go. That's what I'm going to get, and that's Brandy's load that she shoots in the Kimber. So, 308 is a very high-performance cartridge for deer, especially, you know, for our purposes here in Georgia, where, you know, a majority of our shots are under 200 yards, um, it, it certainly possesses plenty of power to take out medium to even large, you know, framed animals that are 250 pounds. I mean, I, I've seen hogs get hit with 308 out of an auto loader and it, it definitely does a number on them. So, you know, 308 is a great hog hunting cartridge. It's great for deer. I've seen 308 do a pretty good number on alligators. Okay. We've shot a lot of coyotes. And foxes, although fox is kind of a small animal for 308. I mean, 308 is kind of heavy medicine for that. But if that's what you got, it's what you got. I mean, I've shot bobcats with it, which again, you know, probably overkill for mm -hmm. the bobcat, but it does work. The bobcats were pretty funny because you thought that those things were going to get mounted, but like, nah. They were yeah. like, dude, you blew his whole shoulder out. Yeah. I can't fix that. They even <laughs> sat in the freezer for a while before that guy came by. Yeah, like, we were like, Bobcats in the freezer. Sorry, kitty. Oh, man. That was bad. I did um, feel bad. You can't talk about 308 without going back to like the idea of the scout rifle. 
Yeah. You know, so like... Well, it's odd that we had the Model 600 mm-hmm. here. So That's it's not it all started. A, not exactly a scout the way it's set up right now, but like Jeff Cooper made the point for a lightweight, handy, short 308 specifically. Specifically a 308. All right. And uh, and arguably for the same reasons yeah. we're discussing. Exactly. So, and that was, you know, that was back in the day. But... um. You know, a light handy rifle with a forward mounted optic that's low power that, you mm-hmm. know, you still have a lot of uh, peripheral peripheral vision available to you. You know, you're not looking down a, a, a long tunnel, right, at like mm-hmm. a six or an eight or ten power optic. You know, you can still see everything that's going on around you. Um, but you can make quick, like, snapshots out to a couple hundred yards, you know, where that particular cartridge is going to be the most effective. So, I mean, you can you can zero a 308 just like you can a 270 or any other hunting rifle, right, for like a point-blank zero. And anything within that range that you've got that point-blank set at, if you hit it with that round, it's likely going to go down. You know, right? and what's crazy is you look at a lot of the combat footage coming out of Ukraine, okay, helmet mm-hmm. cam footage and things like that, and a lot of these soldiers are getting into some pretty tight little kerfuffles, okay, in some <laughs> pretty tight little spots. Now, granted city to city and, 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 you know, room clearing or let's say, you know, urban environments where, you know, you could turn a corner and there's a lot of extreme angles and buildings and things you have to contend with. Okay. Maybe a scout rifle is not the perfect thing for that. But in some of this combat footage I'm seeing, you've got soldiers running around and these guys are shooting at each other with 74s at a couple hundred yards. Now, a scout rifle might be a pretty nice thing to have. You know, mm-hmm. you can maneuver through the woods, you know, keep your cool. All right, you see a muzzle flash, you know, you can snap shoot it, muzzle flash. I mean, like, so the the point could still be made that even in, in a combat role, that scout rifles and light, handy, bolt action um, 308s still have a place, even on a modern battlefield. Now, that's a great way to segue into the next thing I was going to talk about, is to make the case for a semi-auto over a bolt gun. So say that you decided that you want to run a semi-auto instead of doing something like this little 600 or some type of like, you know, low cost, light and handy bolt gun. I still think that everybody should have a 308 bolt gun of some sort, even if it's something basic, even if it's a Ruger American, just something in 308 that you have to scratch that itch. But what if you want to run an auto loader? And what if you want the auto loader to, you know, sort of fill the same niche, if you will, of what it's trying to accomplish? You know, can you still get an auto loader that's reasonably lightweight, easy to point? Maybe not so much, right? I mean, like even a, what, a DPMS Sportical, right, would come to mind as being something sort of affordable and entry level in a 308 auto loader. Uh, even those guns still have a bit of heft. So you're going to contend with a little more weight. You know, everything comes at a cost, right? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you add an optic that's going to add more weight. And, of course, a 20-round magazine full of ammunition is going to add some weight. So are we getting out of Jeff Cooper's concept by switching to an autoloader? Hmm. Or can those can we blend those areas a bit and still kind of be true to, to Cooper's vision? Well, I think you can because um, one, of, one of Cooper's, like, visions was the potential for a magazine-fed scout rifle, you know, at one point. So... Um, whether it be a bolt action or a semi-auto. A Ruger has their M77. And, well, and they also, you know, I don't know if they still produce it. I think they do, but the Gunsight Scout, mm-hmm. you know, which basically, I mean, it was a marriage of all those concepts, and it was specifically for, you know, Gunsight itself, but it, it literally was like Jeff Cooper's vision embodied in a modern rifle, you know. Um but it's magazine fed, and I, I mean, I've seen plenty of like magazine fed, um, you know, bolt guns out there that take like AR-10 mags, you know, Magpul mags, yes, or 25 mags and such, and uh, it does make the platform a lot more handy. Quick magazine uh, swaps instead of like having to worry with stripper clips for an internal mag, that sort of thing. I mean, that was kind of the point of a scout rifle is the optics mounted forward of the uh, ejection port. That way, you still had access to it for stripper clip use. But that was mainly just a uh, point of concern for internal magazines you know but if you got a detachable mag i mean there's really no point in needing that clearance at that point but i mean sim auto would give you faster follow-up shots would soak up some of the recoil on a lightweight rig right you know just with the um with the cycling of the action taking some of that energy out of the equation so you wouldn't have that brunt force 
of all that recoil going into your shoulder, you know, so one could argue that that definitely gives you quicker follow-up shots because semi-automatic action, less recoil. So I don't know. I think there's a, there, I'm going to, I'm going to gather some hate for this, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. Here I think, we go. I think there's, a, I think there's certainly a case to be made for the scar because it's light, it's accurate, it's magazine fed. And it's like, it is a bit of a marriage of those components. Sure. Is it going to have a little more heft than this little 600 here? It will, but is it much? It's Is it so much more weight that it's a deal breaker? I mean, grab my scar. Mm. It's right there behind you. We got to be wrong. I mean, now you start kidding it out with a light and a suppressor and a heavy optic. Sure. It's going to get gather some heft. Look at But if you, you if you aim to keep it lightweight and handy, mm. the scar is a handy rifle. Especially with a 14-inch barrel. You know, you trim a little bit of meat off the barrel. Now you're talking, you know, yeah, that's, would, a, that's an option. It would be handy, but then you're losing velocity. You're losing energy downrange. Like most of the, like, kind of scout type or, uh, you know, commercial hunting rifles we're talking about are at least like a 20-inch barrel. Right. So, like you know, this. you're getting, you're getting uh, you know, a reasonable amount of velocity out of it compared to, uh, you know, 16 or like a 14 and a half. And then you get into NFA territory and all that nonsense, mm-hmm. right? So sure. you're, you're kind of getting into a point where like... Eh, but even you, the 16 inch gun is ridiculously it, handy. It is, but the only thing I don't really like about the SCAR is, all right, number one, they've got a break on them from the factory, which helps with, you know, the gun being so light and shooting a full power cartridge, right? They're obnoxiously loud. They're obnoxiously loud. And the barrels are so skinny on them, they're notoriously difficult to get a can aligned on them properly, which we've done, and it worked out pretty well. But then you don't get that same amount of, like... Now you're losing rec- the handiness. You're losing the handiness, and you're kind of losing, like, that, that recoil reduction that that break allows. It's just that gun is designed to be used in its original configuration, like from the factory, the way it came. And you start messing around with it a bit, it's like, eh, it's not really meant for that. Not in in the big scheme of things. Now, so. I will say this, that in a, in a situation where I need to go, I don't know, into a potentially dangerous situation, and let's just say for whatever reason, okay, let's say that 308's all I have, and that's the ammo I got, and I need something to launch 308, I'm grabbing my scar. Okay, I mean, that's that's just the bottom line. I, I really do like the SCAR. I think the SCAR 20S in 308 is a bit of a waste because you don't really fully get the potential out of it like you would with a 6mm Creedmoor or a 6.5 Creedmoor. And that's my biggest regret buying the SCAR 20S is not waiting on the 6.5 Creedmoor. In fact, in our original video, I even alluded, I was like, I bet FN is going to release this gun in 65 Creed more because that would be the ticket. And it was never even a thought. I don't even think it was on paper. Like they've never announced it or said anything about it. I was merely speculating that, hey, this gun in 65 Creed more would be the tits. And what happened? It came out in 65 Creed more. I mean, which we knew it was going to come out in 65 Creed more. Like, of course, they're going to make it in 65 Creed more because that's a real hot cartridge. But that's getting back into that original argument that we posed in the th- Is 308 Dead? So. I just want to say that I do like the SCAR. I think it's a fantastic gun. And for what it's worth, okay, Special Forces and Rangers and SEALs and all these high-speed operators that were using the SCAR in combat in those early years that were complaining about stringing and the barrel being thin, uh, their primary concern was with the 5.56 version, not the 308 version. And most of them, if given a choice, would prefer Mm -hmm. the 308 because despite the quirks, you know, it's weird because the the, the 5.56 and the 308 almost... Way the same. Mm-hmm. So why not have the, you know, bigger, bigger pill? And, uh, and, and you know, they, they do pretty well. So I think there's a case to be made for a lightweight semi-auto as well. And I just want to kind of put that out there whereby this video is mainly about hunting, but sometimes things hunt you back. And, and you know, I, I, I want to mention quickly, too, some more of that Ukrainian combat footage that I saw the other day. We can't show it, uh, although... There's nothing violent about it, uh, this particular uh, footage or whatever. I don't own the footage, so I'm not, I'm not going to try to pull it and show it. But uh, it was some footage of it was showing this younger fella running around with a bolt action 308. Okay. And get this it was not a mag, it was a blind magazine 308. 
And this fella would, and he had his helmet cam on, he would jump up and take a few pop shots with his bolt gun, and then he would get back down in the trench, open the bolt, and he would take single rounds out of his pocket and top it back off. So, hey, run what you brung, right? I'm not saying that that, uh, now, is would I want to have a blind magazine bolt gun in the middle of a war where people are shooting machine guns and no telling what else and AK-74s and 47s and whatever, you know, belt feds? No. But if you're hitting what you're aiming at, I mean, it, I guess it just goes to prove that, you know, it really is about the capabilities of the person behind the gun more than it is what the gun is. So it's like, don't get hung up on, oh, I have to have this gun or that gun because it's it's what the cool guys are running. Uh, if you don't possess the skills and the fortitude and the knowledge to use the tools to their fullest extent of their abilities, it doesn't matter. You could be given the best tools ever. If your skill set ain't there, it ain't going to matter what you have. You're just going to be an expensive loot drop. So just something to think about. Mm. I mean, I was I was watching that footage and thinking, like, dude, he's got some brass balls, you know, to bring a blind a flush magazine bolt gun into a gunfight. I'm thinking, like, dude, this is a war. Like, but that's what he had. I don't know. And maybe, that's what he was running. Maybe he shot ten cans at like you know five hundred, six hundred yards with it, and that's just what he's familiar with. It's like, I know my holdovers. Hey, he I knows mean, how to. I ain't hating the guy. Ukrainian windage, everything you know. That's yeah, sort of instead thing. of Kentucky, it's yeah, Ukrainian windage. Ukrainian windage. Um. So one one thing about like 308 as a cartridge, you know, when 308 came around, it was meant to, you know, replace basically replace the 30 out six, right? So take go from a long action to a short action cartridge, uh, you know, while retaining the capabilities of 30 out six. So um, there's that. But you know, when the M16 rolled around, the whole thing was. The 308 was too powerful of a cartridge, you know. The troops couldn't shoot the guns accurately and all this stuff. It's like they were just a bunch of wimps, I guess, right? After, you know, World War II. So, well, the case could certainly be made for carrying more 556 ammo could, than 308 yeah. ammo, so that was probably one concern. Well, and it was it was the new hotness and I'm sure there were some pockets to be lined, you know, with the military contracts and such, but you know, that's As neither always. that's neither here nor there for this video, but you know, the 308 was replaced you know, in the big scheme of things with the 5.56 and the M16, right? And the the M4, M16, those family of rifles have been in service all over the world since then, right? Still today. But you saw with like SIG recently in the last couple of years releasing the new uh, Army rifle in the 6.8 by 51. So they've kind of gone full circle. They've gone back to like basically a 308 based case, but with a smaller projectile, higher BCs, mm. better performance, better powders. And like that round does more than what 308 is capable of, you know? So I just think it's funny, like how it's gone from 308 in the military sense to 556 and then back around to something loosely based on 308, you know, in the modern service rifles. But, um, I'm, I'm Is that to say that M80 ball will ever not be a thing? I mean, I, I, I think there's so many 308 guns that are still out there in service all mm. around the world that I think it's still going to stay a NATO cartridge for well, some time. I, it's going to take a long time for NATO to drop it completely. I think so. And, I mean, there's still guns in inventory all across the, the services, you know, the service branches that are chambered in 308. So it's not going away as far as, like, um, you know, U.S. production, but maybe at some point the only way we can get like surpluses is, is being imported, you know, um, like just NATO spec M80 from other countries or whatever. For, I know that Triple G, the Lithuanian 308 that we had in those battle packs, oh my that gosh. was some good shooting yep. ammo. I mean, out of my scar, it was like, it pit the ace. And for ball ammo, mm -hmm. son, it but shoots great. I will That's say, one thing I can say about the scar. It shoots ball, match, Pretty much, it doesn't matter what you throw in the dang thing; it's going to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say, like with with most three hundred eights, at the ranges that, like especially in Georgia, that we hunt at. I mean, you're talking sub two hundred yards most of the time, sub hundred yards. If you got your gun zeroed for a particular type of ammo, right, and you forgot it, and you got to go down to the local gun shop, right, pick up whatever they got on the shelf. They don't have your brand of ammo. There's a pretty good likelihood that if you got like a 50 yard zero or something for your point blank, that it's going to shoot. It's going to be close enough. Exactly where it needs to to hit that pie plate at 200 yards. Right. Right. So that's one of the 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 kind of 
benefits, I think, of of a standardized cartridge like that too is, I mean, obviously it's Sammy spec. If you get roughly the same weight ammo, it's probably going to shoot about the same. You know, notwithstanding you have a bunch of stuff hanging off your gun that changes the harmonics and stuff like that. But a simple like bolt action hunting rig like what you got set up there with that mohawk, I don't think you're going to have a problem with it. And that's the beauty of it too. Yep. You know, so I think we made the case pretty solid. And and this video was meant also to be sort of a response to the original is 308 dead video. This is sort of us holding 308 back up on a platform and, and making people realize that we weren't trying to take a crap on 308. Mm-hmm. We certainly were not. And I, I, I hope people didn't take it as that. Oh, hey. 308 is, definitely has its uses. So look, I, I still have you know my, my Remington 700 chambered in 308. You know, that's just because I haven't shot the barrel out and I haven't replaced it with 6.5 cream more yet. Ooh. Ooh. I'm just kidding. No. Ooh, what a no. way to end this one. <laughs> Ooh. No, I'm kidding. I did rebarrel both of those uh, R700s and 6.5 Creedmoor. I, uh, but to be fair, I have plenty of 308 bolt guns yeah, to so take up the slack. I considered rebarreling that gun, but, you know, got the Begara. And, I mean, that thing shoots living daylights out. So I'm going to keep the 700 as a 308 just to keep it standard. Quick talking point. You know point. what I mean? That's a great idea. So, quick talking point that I wanted to kind of bring up. If you are going to run 308 in a bolt action that can be used maybe for a hunting situation, the argument could be made that this gun has its purpose and that fancy chassis gun in the GRS stock over there has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And those purposes are just completely different, a different type of alignment. Okay. Notice the, the, the nighttime hog kill that we made there with Oscar. Okay. This gun can't do that. It ain't made for that. Now, can 308 shoot 600 yards and kill a hog? Yeah, it can. Out of this gun, it's going to be a challenge. But when you start adding suppressors and clip-ons and thermals and gadgets and fancy stocks and double tripod systems and nighttime capability, is it nice having that bit of a higher BC on the projectile, flatter trajectory to get that long-range shot at night? Mm -hmm. I think the answer is yes. So, you know, maybe... 308 has just been regulated back to just a good old brush gun caliber, you know, like Alt 6. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't build a custom tactical fancy 30 Alt 6, would you? You'd probably build a 6.5 Creedmoor, 6 millimeter Creedmoor, whatever the new hotness is, mm-hmm. or that 277 Fury, that mm-hmm. new SIG cartridge, which I haven't seen a lot of people building bolt guns in that yet. Be kind of curious to see what the kill data looks like well, what, on it. What I've seen people build in bolt guns in now are like the 300 PRCs. They've got the new 7mm PRC out, 6.5 PRC, the precision rifle cartridges. We have a video coming up on the 300 PRC. Didn't you uh, shoot a few rounds out of that? What do you think about it? Mm-hmm. I like it. I had to give that gun back. It was just a loner mm. for a different purpose, which you guys will find out about pretty soon. But yeah, it's... It's an interesting cartridge. I mean, the the performance is is pretty stellar. I How mean, much more juice does that thing have? I don't want to get into that because this is about three hundred eight. But two hundred I mean, two hundred feet per second over six five Creed, substantial. So that sounds uh, that and smells like a future video. And it's still basically a short action cartridge, more or less. I mean, in the big scheme, of I'll things. tell you what we'll do. We're going to revisit this type of video concept, and what we'll do is we'll compare some of the hot rods to some of the oldies. And let's just see what we're really gaining here. All right. I'd like to compare 6.5 by 55 to 6.5 Creedmoor. And then, of course, 6.5 PRC to those. And I think you'll see, you know, you do start to get some additional power there. Um, look, 308 is an awesome caliber. Doesn't matter if you run an auto loader or a bolt gun. Uh, you know, if you're going to run an auto loader, it weighs a lot. Man, that's okay. Just beat your Wheaties. Yeah, you can you can carry it. I mean, if you man enough to carry it, you man enough to use it. That's fine. Doesn't matter if it weighs more, just eat your Wheaties, drink your water, move on with life. But there is something to say about a light handy bolt gun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Um, it, we always love posing these questions because it gets some of y'all riled up. But we're trying to make these points, hopefully, to help people that are out there trying to prepare and trying to uh, you know make themselves as capable as possible, both uh, in the deer field and, uh, well as we saw in the situation with the Ukrainian combat footage, uh, maybe even the battlefield. So something to be considered there. So I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in. And again, uh, a happy new year to everybody. It's 2023 is going to be one heck of a year. So thanks for tuning in. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.